10,000 U.S. troops are now in position. This is a full U.S. military buildup, a national security posture against a narco-terrorism network. Reports of President Trump authorizing CIA covert operations inside Venezuelan territory. This means U.S. black operations forces have the green light for direct action against the Maduro government. Venezuela is completely surrounded. Three nuclear-capable B-52 bombers patrol near Venezuelan coast. They are patrolling extremely close to Lorcaila and Granru military sites. Caribbean naval blockade and maritime interdiction posture. Caribbean Sea is locked down by eight Navy surface warships, the amphibious assault ship USS Iwo Jima, and a silent nuclear-powered attack submarine maintaining subsurface presence. The White House directive is now clear. We are looking at land now. The sheer scale of Operation Venezuela is now laid bare. We know the forces deployed, but the crucial finding lies in the unrevealed plan. Is this overwhelming encirclement intended as a terrifying final bluff? Or have we just seen phase one, the silent precursor to a hidden, more destructive, secret phase two? F-35 deployment. A full squadron of F-35B Lightning II stealth fighters is deployed at Jose Aponte de la Torre Airport, Puerto Rico. They are armed with live AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. Drone surveillance for semi-submersible interdiction. MQ-9 Reaper drones equipped with Hellfire precision munitions. Deployed at Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. Special Operations Aviation Units, MH-6 Little Birds and MH-60 Blackhawks, are positioned less than 90 miles from the Venezuelan shoreline. Operation Venezuela. Every piece of the puzzle is in place. Will Washington opt for a similar strategy to the action taken against Iran's regime? If yes, the next step is to uncover together what this operation might look like. If you're tracking this operation, stay locked on. Hit subscribe and tap hype to get the next transmission first. For years, Washington has accused Venezuela's government of becoming more than a regime, calling it a global crime business that trades in drugs, gold, and illicit cash. According to U.S. indictments and international investigations, senior Venezuelan officials have been tied to large-scale drug trafficking networks and money laundering operations that stretch across Latin America, the Caribbean, and parts of Europe and Africa. In 2020, the U.S. Justice Department charged President Nicolas Maduro and several top aides, alleging their direct role in what prosecutors called a narco-terrorism conspiracy. As a result, the U.S. no longer treats Maduro as a recognized head of state, but as an indicted, fugitive leader. A $50 million bounty has been announced for information leading to his capture, signaling how serious the United States considers the case. Behind these charges lies a vast shadow economy. U.S. and U.N. reports estimate that Venezuela's illicit trade network generates nearly $4.8 billion every year through narcotics, gold mining, and corruption schemes. One branch of this system, identified in intelligence briefings as the Red Vein Network, is believed to move around $1.2 billion annually. It operates through protected ports, military escorts, and international smuggling routes connecting the Caribbean to West Africa. Investigations have also tracked about $480 million in laundered funds flowing back to senior Venezuelan officials, evidence linking high-ranking power directly to criminal profit. These operations are often disguised as legitimate industry. Investigators have exposed factories, refineries, and shipping hubs that secretly produce or move contraband under normal business fronts. One example, a refinery complex near Puerto Cabello, flagged by multiple agencies as a suspected cover site for illicit production. For the U.S., this is no longer seen as simple organized crime. It's framed as a national security threat. Officials argue these networks fund armed groups, undermine regional governments, and send narcotics directly toward U.S. shores. And as Washington tightens its grip, one question drives every move. How do you stop a state that's built its power on a criminal empire? Next, we reveal as Washington tightens its grip how Maduro's empire is starting to collapse under pressure. Every leader makes calculations, but facing a wall of American power, Nicolas Maduro found himself cornered. Fast. Reports say he tried one last move, to give up almost everything except his seat of power. 
he reached out with huge offers. First, he promised U.S. companies front row access to Venezuela's biggest oil and gold projects. Next, he said he'd flip his country's oil exports back from China to the U.S. He even offered to cut all energy ties with Russia and Iran. That's a complete reversal of his old alliances. A massive step. But Washington's answer was short. No deal. According to analysts, U.S. officials made one position clear. A full change of leadership, not a trade. Maduro then tried to call his friends in Moscow, Beijing, and Tehran for help. None promised military backup. He stood, basically, alone. Under the pressure, he declared maximum preparedness, placing the nation's forces on alert and accusing the U.S. of aggression. Venezuela's defense ministry announced 17,000 regular troops deployed to the border, alongside claims of millions more in civilian militia. But independent estimates paint a very different, far weaker reality. Roughly 125,000 trained soldiers make up the true fighting core of the nation. Behind the slogans and military parades, the numbers are telling a simple truth. Maduro is preparing for a fight he isn't ready for. This begs the ultimate strategic question. If a confrontation were launched, given the sheer imbalance of military power, will Maduro even get a chance to fight back? Next, we break down if the US opts for a full-blown operation on Maduro's empire, how it could look like, the full-spectrum plan that analysts say could change Venezuela's future in just days. Phase 1. Sky and Sea Lockdown. B-52s sweeping the air. F-35s forward. The Caribbean naval blockade tightening. Second phase. Strike the Red Vein Network. Money sites. Refinery covers. Ports. Ships. Phase 3. Secure the intelligence harvest. Capture the proof. Servers, ledgers, money. And the corrupt officials behind it all. The US strategy uses deployed assets for both public warning and undetectable operational readiness. Heavy bombers fly visibly near Venezuela to signal massive reach and capability, acting as a clear public warning that long-range strikes are possible. The actual operational edge is held by the covert force. Stealth F-35 fighters, MQ-9 Reaper drones, forward-deployed Navy and Marine special ops assets, enabling faster, flexible action without being easily detected. The naval presence guarantees a lockdown and provides critical support for specialized missions. Warships and a specialized special ops support ship, the MV Ocean Trader, have moved into the region. This vessel acts as a mobile base for small, specialized units and helicopters. This capability is vital, putting forces and equipment within regional reach without relying on fixed land bases. Now the question, how exactly does this tactical plan unfold? Step 1. Black out the skies. Air control. The very first action is to make the enemy completely deaf and blind. The attack begins with the giant B-52 bombers, protected by fast F-15E Strike Eagles and special EA-18G Growlers. The Growlers have this one job. They jam the enemy's radar, creating total radio silence, blinding the enemy and preventing them from seeing or communicating. Once the blackout is in place, the planes are ready to drop powerful 2,000-pound precision bombs on key sites. Step 2. Hitting the money hubs. The targets. The goal here is to surgically cut off the network's cash flow and criminal power. Intelligence teams are believed to identify main compounds linked to the secret Red Vein network, which moves about $1.2 billion every year. One target looked like a simple sugar refinery near Puerto Cabello, but inside were five active chemical reactors, secretly guarded by foreign contractors. This shows how the criminals hide illegal business under official cover. Step 3. The Secret Attackers. Ground Entry. Once the initial strikes finish, elite ground forces step in with extreme speed. Special operations forces like Army Rangers and Navy SEALs launch their assault using MH-60 Blackhawks and MH-6 Littlebirds to fast rope quickly down a thick rope onto their targets. These teams launch from the MV Ocean Trader, a mobile base ship sitting less than 90 miles away. This mobile launch pad allows them to strike without relying on any static land base. Step 4. Breaking the System Follow-on strikes. The operation then hits deeper targets to dismantle the connections that hold the corrupt system together. Advanced cruise missiles like the AGM-158JASSMs may be used to hit targets located deep inside the country. 
These missiles strike places like training sites and critically important relay stations tasked with connecting corrupt officers to smugglers. Step 5. The Hidden Danger – Expected Resistance Maduro's resistance shows a major weakness, but also a dangerous hidden threat. His main defense relies on aged Russian weapon systems, including S-300 missile batteries and about 100 T-72 tanks. Analysts predict most of these would be destroyed almost immediately. But the real risk is in the city fighting. Local gangs and militants are armed with an estimated 6,000 portable anti-air missiles, manpads. These small, easily hidden weapons could seriously threaten helicopters and special ops insertions. Step 6. The Final Prize – Intelligence Harvest and Money Laundering Evidence This final step secures the lasting consequences of the entire operation. Elite special ops teams will seize all computers, hard drives, and physical cash. The evidence is massive. This effort would expose nearly $480 million in hidden funds tied directly to top Venezuelan officials. This is the ultimate proof that makes the allegations stick forever. Everything about Operation Venezuela would be engineered for two things, extreme speed and surgical precision. The goal will be clear. Hit the targets fast, capture the undeniable proof, and get out clean. The strategy is meant to show unstoppable capability, proving to the world the U.S. can dismantle a criminal core without being trapped in a long, drawn-out war. But now that the force is visibly deployed, we face the biggest question yet. Is this the exact moment the overwhelming pressure stops being a terrifying bluff and the military action truly begins? This current campaign by the administration has delivered decisive results, but its very methods are now tearing apart Washington. Legal experts call the high-precision operations patently unlawful under international standards, arguing they lack clear authorization and amount to small pinprick attacks that ignore major drug sources like Mexico and the Pacific, suggesting the true goal is political transition not crime enforcement. But the White House remains resolute. They maintain the U.S. is engaged in a non-international armed conflict against unlawful combatants, bringing dangerous influence to our shores. Their evidence? Following these decisive actions, the flow of specific synthetic substances into the U.S. dropped by nearly 30%. What we're watching is big. B-52 bombers in the sky, F-35s forward, and special authorities cleared for tough operations. These are not small moves. The message is loud. America intends to win. Maduro reportedly offered almost everything to avoid conflict. Washington said no. The choice now is clear to many. Either accept a partial deal or push for total change. Sound off in the comments. Should the US stop and accept a partial surrender or push until the old regime is fully removed? If this broke things open for you, hit like and share this video with one friend who needs to see it. Subscribe now to stay inside the briefing. Every update brings us closer to uncovering how Operation Venezuela really unfolds. Thank you for watching. Your attention keeps this channel alive.